You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Teen Wolf After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Teen Wolf <laughs> After Show. Hello, AfterBuzzers. We're here during another AfterBuzz TV after show for MTV's Teen Wolf Season 4, Episode 5, IED. I'm your host, Kristen Elizabeth Snyder, and joining me, AfterBuzz TV host, June Lee. Hello. We have three special guests for you today. We have music supervisor, Laura Webb. The we amazing. Have... <laughs> the amazing. <laughs> the amazing. We have writer of this episode and writer Ooh, on yeah. Teen Wolf. Please welcome Angela Harvey. Hi. And producer Ian Stokes, you might remember him from last season. He joined us with Jeff. Hi, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank we, you. We are so excited that you guys were able to make it. I know some of you are on hiatus. Some of you are still working. <laughs> Laura says no. Laura's like, what's hiatus? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'm right. sorry. If I had known I was going to be on the couch, I wouldn't have worn shorts. But as you can see, I'm in summer mode. Check out those legs. <laughs> I mean, this, this, is, bites. this is Teen Wolf. It's very sexy. We requested he wear shorts today. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Let's yeah. My hiatus yeah. clothing. Yeah. Hiatus clothing. Yeah. So let's go ahead and start talking about the music. That was a uh, break out by headhunters and audio freak that the, so tell the audience um you know how you go about getting this music well it's been fun going back to lacrosse because we haven't really yeah. got to do lacrosse mm -hmm. in a season or two and and i always i always like finding that because it's usually really fun and upbeat and kind of you can you can be more exploratory with that mm -hmm. stuff but Definitely. um i mean typically when i find music for the show i'll read the script that the writers, right? <laughs> and uh, and I kind of try to think what they're thinking, you know, and, and think now that we've been in the this, this show for four seasons, I kind of can guess when we think we have a music moment. Mm -hmm. But then I'll go and sit with the editors once everything's been filmed and um, kind of guess again, like, oh, how was this shot? You know, because maybe it was in my mind, like, I thought, oh, this would be a great montage moment, and it's only, like, ten seconds, so mm -hmm. there's not enough room for a song. How you know? long does it have to be in order to put a song in there? I mean, it, it just depends on the moment. You can do a quick vocal up. I mean, it, it just, like, it all depends, and you, you really tweak things with the editor and see what works, kind of. But, also, our um, budget. Yeah, our budget. <laughs> the also, longer it's the song. Yeah, that, <laughs> that also is, uh, you know, part of what we pick. But um, the good news is, is I, I find a lot of new up-and-coming artists, so mm -hmm. they're yeah. a little bit more flexible than, like, the Beatles, so that's <laughs> the good news. Um, Can you go into, like, the budget constraints a little bit? I mean, you know, it, it's just... It, <laughs> well, the music's very important to the show, yeah. and Jeff and I will often, will often sit and post, and we, uh, well, the budget's everywhere. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but uh, yeah. you know, we, uh, Jeff, the way Jeff likes the show is it's wall-to-wall -wall music, which mm -hmm. is uh, mm -hmm. very cinematic, and whether yes. it's score or uh, something Laura finds for mm -hmm. us. Um, so we, we, you know, we add up. I think we, what, how many songs do we use in episode these days? I mean, it depends. Like, some, as we're working on four, you know, maybe it's only one song, but it'll be for a really big moment. Um, uh, we have an episode coming up later, um, and I think there's, like, 16 or something, hopefully. What? This if, season? If, yeah. Wow. So there'll be some, a bunch. That's and exciting. then, like, actually all this with the lacrosse, like, last week's episode, or like, last week's episode was the Lake House Party. Mm -hmm. And then tonight was lacrosse, so we got to use a good bit. And that's, I mean, more fun for me. Obviously. Yeah, I'm but. always shazamming all the songs. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, so, Angela, can you talk about the writing process a little bit for this episode? Well, all the episodes we pretty much outlined together mm -hmm. in the room. Um, very cooperative, sometimes argumentative <laughs> <laughs> process, but it's a lot of fun. And uh, well, friends, we get along pretty well. I so mean, the way we uh, we sort of in the beginning of the season. Uh, we arc out a bunch of episode ideas that yeah. we want to do, and like you know, we knew this year we were bringing lacrosse back. Mm -hmm. um, 
which meant we had to find a lacrosse field because we actually had not played lacrosse since the show moved from Atlanta oh, wow. to Los Angeles. And we mm. found a place right around here. It's a cricket field. <laughs> uh, that's like a mile from our, our stages. So in some ways it worked out because if we had to go to like Santa Clarita or something, we probably would have just not done lacrosse because we hate going on the road. Right. Um, but, uh, and then so lacrosse we had, you know, we talked about some episodes. We wanted to do a lot of... Um, sort of teenage school set episodes uh, initially gotcha. early on because we know the story, wherever the story ends up taking us halfway through the season we're at insane asylums <laughs> and internment <laughs> camps and so we get away from the school so we try to start with uh, we wanted to do the cross tryouts, the lake house party and then our first game even though this ended up being a, a scrimmage for the story purposes. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys, you, you start with all like the episode outlines you do together and then you give it to one of the writers to actually go put it you know, in script format? Yeah, and flesh gotcha. out. And, um, yeah, this particular episode we were doing a lot of mystery recap and kind of catching yes, up. Yes, we loved sure. that part, the beginning where it's just like you know, Styles went ahead and said pretty much everything that had gone on and sort of caught everybody up. And it mm -hmm. was also like a great reminder and put us in that right place, keep us mm -hmm. grounded of what's going on. Yeah. Those are insanely difficult scenes to At write. Least that's exactly yeah. where I was going with that. Yeah, I remember uh, <laughs> Angela's draft, like that first scene came back at like 10 pages. <laughs> and like she's like, like that's okay, there's producers. And we're like, <laughs> and Jeff and I are like, oh, we'll snip that, we'll snip that. And like, we'll clear that up later. But it, uh, you know, it is a, a tough scene to handle and Angela did a great job with it. But yeah. um, uh, those are scenes we love, especially because we're always, on, people are always like, you know, we, we read the internet reaction every now and then and people are very <laughs> confused at the end of an episode. So every once in a while we try to catch people up and that was mm -hmm. one of our catch-up scenes. Um, but no, Jen Lynch did a fantastic it. job yeah, making that very visual and dynamic and fun and um, we watch a lot of shows like, like Sherlock is a show that uses, that does catch up in factoids in a very interesting way. So we mm -hmm. try to use visuals as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we enjoy that. Um, I wanted to ask you, Ian, so as producer, it seems like you're kind of all over the place. You help out in the writer's room. You help out, you know, you're like Jeff's right hand man. I, so. I mostly just stay in the, in the writer's room because really? set is just, I get roped in by sandwiches and <laughs> actor drama. And so I normally just stay in there with Angela and Alyssa and Eric and my dog. <laughs> and oh. always come back from set like, their sandwich isn't crafty. <laughs> Guess what, their soup. <laughs> I've always, I know there's snacks out there, so that's yeah. why I have to stay inside. Um, so you primarily are helping out with the writing this season? Yes, that's, uh, that's Jeff is, is the guy in, in post, and Eric's been helping him in post, and we try to keep the room together as, as much as possible because we have a lot of work to do. And whereas most shows have, you'll have ten writers in a room, we mm -hmm. have, we had Five, pretty much, because uh, Owen O'Donnell was joined us at the beginning. Of the, he was there in season three B, and then he got his pilot picked up, so he was gone pretty early on. So it was just me, Angela, Eric, uh, Alyssa, oh, and wow. Jeff. Um, mm. We have twelve episodes left to go, <laughs> which yeah. is daunting. Um, but you know, Ian does a lot of casting work too. So it's oh, like, mm. that's <laughs> we actually have a caller on the line. Huh? Caller, what's your name? Where are you from? Hey guys, this is Josh from Florida. Hi Josh. Hi, Josh. Do you have a question for these guys? Um, yeah, but first I just want to say that, you know, with only like five writers in the room, like, I got to give you guys a clap because, like, <laughs> that was like an awesome so episode. And, like, I mean, just everything about it from the game to, like, just those scenes, those little small scenes, like Tyler, I mean, not Tyler, Scott and um, Derek, you know, just that whole, you seeing their relationship grow. And mm -hmm. just, like, how depressed Lydia was, like, in the beginning of the episode, and, like, you really, like, had me feeling really bad for her. And then just her, then to her freak out, you know, really letting us know how she feels. Just the whole episode was just awesome. And, like... Thanks, man. For you guys <laughs> to whole outline, the, outline that and just all that work. Like, it, it was my favorite episode so far. So I just want to say... Yeah, 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 yeah I agree, awesome. Josh. I you guys. <laughs> you know, the thing about the other thing with we're in that room so much outlining when people are like, well, what was your idea? Like, I have no idea. Yeah. I don't know where yeah. any of this stuff comes from, but we just, because we're in there so much just churning out ideas and, mm -hmm. and whatever we can come up with. Every once in a while, there's a line that I'm like, that sounds like a joke I wrote. Yeah. But that's all I got. <laughs> well, sometimes if it was really funny when it happened in the room, or if there was like a major argument over it, then you remember very specifically. Right. But yeah, we all, all have, everyone in the room, um, 
has different levels of, uh, of, of bullshit detectors or bullshit like limits. <laughs> yeah. And we all call each other out if like something like, uh, Alyssa hates it when we're totally inaccurate about the education system. <laughs> like, yes. yeah, yeah. like, yeah. uh, like uh, you know, she's like, Malia and Lydia wouldn't be in the same class. And yeah. we're like, like, you know, Malia's a coyote. She shouldn't be anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, and like we, have, we only have one classroom set. Yeah. So, uh, and then we have a PSAT episode coming up that I just watched a cut of. And I'm like, I know uh, Alyssa's going to flip out about how inaccurate. Because there's a lot of stuff. I think she wrote that one, right? Um, the, the PSAT? No. Is that, is that you? <laughs> no. It, I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, the PSAT is like I'm watching it. There's a lot of things about the PSAT that I don't remember looking up or researching or writing. So I'm, uh, that just it felt like Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, do you have a question for them before we let you go? Um, yeah, um, when you guys are writing the script, um, how do you guys get into, like, the different, you know, characters? Like, what is it that, you know, makes you feel like, okay, this is something Lydia would say, or this is something that Scott would say, or this is something that, you're... like, how do you get into that zone to really, like, start, you know, dialing in on those different characters? I've been on the show since season one. Like, I started out as an as a producer's assistant, and then I moved over into writing during season three. Wow. So it's like, I've... I've Congratulations. I know these characters. I know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But I know these guys, you know. And so I feel like it's more it's more of an instinct, I think, than it is like a, a thought. You're like you don't really put yourself in that mindset as much as you're just well, you know that person. I mean I know with uh, especially with Scott and Styles, you know, I, I think I don't think like what would a superhero cop do? I think what would a kind of dumb teenage boys do? And that's like where like well we would duct tape Liam and throw him in a bathtub. Like, yeah. those sorts of like plans come up. And like mm -hmm. when I say what would a teenage boy do? Like honestly, I'm not that much smarter. So it's like, like what would I do? I would freak out. Um, and so there, but there's it. I think that's what keeps the characters very grounded mm -hmm. on this show. Um, and I think that's something that every, as the world itself on our show keeps get, getting bigger and crazier, and now we have hitmen and assassins and all sorts of <laughs> monsters, mm -hmm. that they're still just teenagers. Right. right. And that just, that's what makes it easy to write. Well, thank you so much for calling in, Josh. No Bye, problem. Josh. You guys are awesome. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Uh, so let's go ahead and start jumping into the episode. So we start off with Violet, one of the orphans, chasing down Carrie, yeah. I believe it is. And, you know, we get that she kind of recites that same, you know, only three things can be hidden, um, things that cannot be hidden. Long be hidden, yeah. Long mm -hmm. be hidden, and it's like the sun, the moon, the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's also what DeMarco mm -hmm. said. So, I mean, is there a pact here that we're not seeing, you know, another wolf pack that maybe we're going to get to see more of as, like, the season well, continues? Well, you're right that they were both uh, werewolves that said that <laughs> mantra. <laughs> and it, it does seem like we would be drawing some sort of connection there coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I like that. That was less spoilery than I was going to go. But <laughs> <laughs> I smile. Yeah, hang on. I know. He's, like, he's like, no one say I anything. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just had to rewatch this episode in the car on the way over because I, I didn't want to say <laughs> it. I have driving. no idea yeah, while you're driving. I just plug it in. I, I listen to it. I, it's such a I already had it. I listen, yeah. I'm a writer. Kids don't want to say. <laughs> but uh, I just had, a disclaimer. To, had to remember what I was, where we left off, so I don't mm -hmm. give any spoilers. But I think, I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I like how that you then, uh, you know, Garrett comes in and pretends that he's going to help Carrie. And, of course, you know, he tricks her, lets her in a car, locks mm -hmm. the doors, and then stabs her. Yeah. I was going to say, mm -hmm. like, that was a really, like, surprising moment for me because up until that point, I kind of viewed Garrett as, like, this sweet, kind of chivalrous, nice guy. Yeah, but he, he I was... I know he's bad. Yeah. But, like, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. I just got. I don't know if it's the actor. He just has like a very like, uh, like he does Mason that all American. Yeah. yeah. He just he he just had like this like very chivalrous quality to him. So I like immediately liked him, and I was just kind of like, whoa, bad guy. Bad guy. <laughs> so he didn't actually behead the wolf at the party. He just got right. Right. So, yeah. You know, right. There was room for confusion. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that that uh, that scene in the car. It's a little Terminator. Come with me if you want to live. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. We definitely. love our blockbuster I love models. that. I love that. <laughs> So let's talk about Lydia and the cipher keys. So mm -hmm. they have this Deadpool list, and they somehow figure out that there's more to the list mm -hmm. and that they need two more keys. And, you know, th it got really creepy with Lydia going back to the lake house mm -hmm. and listening to the record. I'm like, oh, my God, she's going to be committed to Eichenhaus before I too long know, if she keeps this I up. I know. And then... Oh, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> We're 
we're looking, what was that? We're looking on faces that. for spoilers. <laughs> oh, I, okay, I'm thinking off of Ian's, like, uh, she is going to well die. Then, I, I will say that that uh, the record room, or the quiet room in the lake house, is uh, it's the only part of the lake house we actually have. We built it. <laughs> um, but it's this great room that I, I uh, Rusty designed, and it's very, it was, you know, I think Russell uh, Mulcahy it was introduced in the last, last week's episode. Yeah. And so I think they really wanted to give it this clockwork orange feel. I mm. remember there were boards of, of the clockwork orange, uh, one of the houses in the all over. And uh, the room looks awesome. The carpet's super white, and if you go on set, you have to wear booties. Oh, my God. <laughs> because crew guys, uh, and myself included, will leave our dirty footprints all over mm-hmm. the place. But uh, it's a great room, and we built it. And any set we build, you will see at least four or five times. So we're not mm-hmm. quite done in that room yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I want to see what actually happened in that room was mm-hmm. why it's soundproof. Because mm-hmm. it's like, you don't soundproof a room unless you're going to have a studio, baby. Or, you Lydia know. has one of the more interesting <laughs> storylines uh, this year. And I think yeah. I'm excited really for that. kicking off. I like now that. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I'm mm-hmm. I'm expecting something bad happened in that room, and that's why it was soundproof. You know, some screams, <laughs> somebody was getting killed, or I don't know, some torturing in that room. Well, I mean, um, I don't know. I think I think this season. Well, I'm hoping that we'll see a bit more of Lydia's history. Mm-hmm. It sounds and, like we will. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, with Lydia, I mean, this year we wanted to um, sort of, you know, one thing about we. Uh, on this show, you know, we Lydia's kind of been on the outs in the first couple seasons. Like mm-hmm. it's always like, will Lydia help us? We have to. Ha-. And now Lydia's a part of the team. Mm-hmm. And I think part of her arc was sort of inspired by what happened last season with, uh, you know, Allison basically died trying to save her, and, mm-hmm. and Aiden. Di- she told Aiden to be a better guy, and he died doing that. And now Lydia is sort of on her heroic arc. Mm-hmm. And I think part of that is uh, sort of figuring out um, some secrets about her past, uh, her family history, and. Uh, it's it's a uh, and figuring out how and, uh, to get her own power. Well, yeah. yeah, and we also wanted to make it just horrible because Lydia's our <laughs> Holland's our scream queen, and uh, <laughs> and that was sort of that's sort of using the, the way we using the code words and using Allison and Aiden's name in this episode, which I guess mm-hmm. we'll talk about later. But mm-hmm. we really wanted to make it a, a hard journey for. her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I like how we finally get another banshee coming back, Meredith, to help. Oh, I love that actress. <laughs> I know, Maya Shea. She's, yeah, she's, she's so great. amazing. So she does actually help them out. She gives them four numbers, mm-hmm. and you know they actually got pretty mean with her, <laughs> demanding yeah. more numbers. Because was like, even Malia, who lived in the woods all those years, knew there was more than four numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, no, she's no, a fast no, learner. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work like that. There should be ten. <laughs> like I know this. I think every kid on Team Wolf has to have a cell phone due to her AT and T contract. Right. <laughs> I'm sure she rips out an iPhone in some future episode. Wait, so know. is yeah. it an AT and T contract, not a Samsung? Contract because all the phones are galaxies. Galaxy, I have no it's idea. It's all whatever. Whatever phone is. Yeah, it's yeah. It's whatever yeah. phone. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. So we do find out that Aiden is the second uh, key cipher key, mm-hmm. and we see that somebody is on this list that we did not think was supernatural, which I was genius. Know. I was so glad we got to see that. Mm-hmm. So Parrish. What do you think? Do you think <laughs> he is? Do you think he, is he supernatural, or well, why is I he mean, on like, the definitely list? Definitely, he's supernatural. Well, I mean, some people are saying he could be the benefactor, and that's why his name's on the list because he just put it in there. Or do you think but he's nobody, actually supernatural? But nobody knows who the benefactor is, so I don't think the benefactor would put his own name on there. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, right. so if he's not. Uh, the benefactor. <laughs> what kind of supernatural creature is he? I can I can kind of see him as like a druid, the way he was helping Meredith mm. uh, with the numbers. Like he kind of knew what to do. He was guiding her through that. Mm-hmm. Well, um, that's a very interesting point. But I I correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like all of the druids were. African American. <laughs> wait, 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 am I wrong? No. Wait, why? You, you're, you're not. So you're yes, telling I'm me. Sorry, yes, you're wrong. So I don't Jennifer know. Jennifer was a Durac. She uh-huh. was, all, she was yes. an evil druid. Yeah. yeah. No. Oh. Yeah. So she was yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. No. Well, the druids that we know have been like, related. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. So, so, it, so there black. can't. That no, cannot be. You cannot use that to pick out who the druids okay. are. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. So scratching that. Yeah. Sorry. Because like I was. I was thinking Garrett's, um, no, I'm sorry, Liam's friend, 
Like I feel like it's oh, something. Mason. Yeah, I oh, feel so like you thought something. Yeah, Mason I thought was maybe a druid. Mason oh. was potentially. I don't know. He just kind of uh. has like this wise quality to him. I love Mason. Yeah, yeah he's awesome. I, I feel like there's something up with Mason because yeah, me he too. said, "Look, we we don't quite know <laughs> why he's there yet." Yes, um, I know. he's like this friend that hasn't his role hasn't really been revealed yet. And mm -hmm. well, you even, know, a part of that was sort of with uh, Kylan Rambo plays Mason, uh, mm -hmm. great kid. Mm -hmm. uh, I, get, I think he might be actually a, a adult. I'm not sure because <laughs> Dylan's like 14. What, 16 now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Colin's like. 17, well, you know, uh, uh, part of it was we really wanted to give uh, uh, Dylan um, or Liam his own world. You know, mm -hmm. so there's, this is the freshman class at Beacon Hills High School. Mm -hmm. So we we're gonna and uh, you know we introduced Garrett and Violet. Of course, they turn out to be assassins. Uh huh. Um, but uh, uh, Mason and Liam, you know, I think we. Sort of saw them as Scott and Styles 2.0. Mm -hmm. Yes, gotcha. Mm -hmm. And so trying to give them that kind of relationship, and we're going to be seeing Liam struggling with, you know, him wanting uh, to tell Mason mm -hmm. in the next couple episodes, I think. Yeah. Well, what I kind of I don't know if I'm doing this out of context, but mm -hmm. Mason was sort of like he's like I checked out. I think he was looking for Garrett's and Violet's house, and he went to the yeah. development, mm -hmm. and it was still in development. Yeah. So I mean, I'm like, who why does is that? he? He's doing like exactly. some investigation work. And then another thing that stuck out to me was when they were on like the lacrosse field, mm -hmm. and like he was checking out Brett. Yes. He's like, yeah, I think you can take him and then give him to me. And it was kind of like <laughs> evil for a second. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, maybe Mason is, is like something. I, don't I know. definitely think Mason is something. But to answer your original question, um, Parish. Yes. Um, what is Parish? I don't know. I honestly, I just have a feeling that maybe he's a banshee. Are there are there male banshees or like some sort of like same family? Because mm -hmm. when now it makes sense. Like when I saw that chemistry. Remember when Alyssa was here? We were talking about their chemistry. Mm -hmm. You know when they were finding the um, what are the Windigo, Windigos? Windigos, yes, when we were when they were at the Windigo house. So I mean, maybe like he's going to guide her because he seems very protective of her. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good point. Mm -hmm. So it seems like <laughs> Lydia. We won't get any spoilers from, from us on on Parish. I will say right. Ryan Kelly yeah. is uh, a fantastic actor and a great guy, and he's one of these hmm. one of these characters. And, and it comes up where we give someone a smaller part mm -hmm. uh, with Parish. He showed up uh, the middle of last year, partially because we sort of felt like again, in trying to flesh out our world, that we can't kill, we have to have at least one, one more deputy <laughs> who's not going to die right away. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, so we just killed too many of them. And um, I know Ryan and Jeff are old friends. Um, but, you know, Ryan, he brought something to the role. And, and it's, um, he's kind of, he's very calm and collected and yeah. clear. And there was something kind of interesting about that. And mm -hmm. so, you know, uh, some of the role was based around uh, what we found in Ryan. Um, and I think you know, you'll learn a lot more about Parrish. I just saw uh, there's a big Parrish episode, episode nine, which I he's just got saw. some really cool Ooh. moments. Yeah, that's cool. It's yeah. called Perishable. Oh, one of those spoiler. puns. Spoiler. <laughs> Davis loves. I love puns. So it seems like these names, these um, cipher keys, they're clearly related to Lydia. I mean, the first one was Allison, then Aiden, and some people think you know because her family is going through some financial difficulties, mm -hmm. maybe she has something to do with the 117 million dollars. Mm -hmm. And who do you think the third name's going to be? Some people said it might be Jackson. Yeah, I was wondering about that. I mean, it's it's a it's a journey for them to discover that mm -hmm. last key, you know. And um, we we love it's an we love one. yeah the beginning of the season. You know, we love uh, mysteries and riddles and clues and the mm -hmm. whole thing with the code. We all got very very excited <laughs> about, even though it, it took us a lot to figure out the rules of it, and so it doesn't quite. Don't try this at home. I don't think the cipher key thing would work on the, the way we did it, right? <laughs> but, but it was very it visual. Yeah, it was very visual and exciting. Um, and, uh, you know, the thing with the names, um, it start. I mean, one of the the thing with, with Allison, it is kind of a callback to, uh, was it season two where Scott's password and his screen name were both Allison? Yeah. 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 That's where so the was, it was born. Yeah, I think I, I, think. Came out, I just yeah. remember that moment. And then, um, and now it all, it all kind of flows into the mystery. But as you'll see next week, um, you know, discover, trying to figure out that last word is, 
is is a big deal for the next for actually for Styles and Lydia that's next week. That's their story. Oh, Styles and Lydia. Oh, I'm that's so happy nice. they're gonna be together. I yeah, know. Styles and Lydia are <laughs> teaming up next week. Yes, Yay. awesome. <laughs> Someone said, speaking of Styles, that they think his name is going to be on the list, and that's how we'll finally discover his real name or his first name. <laughs> so oh, they're predicting that he's that. gonna be on like the last third of the list. Huh. So. As far as as long as I'm here, we're never gonna learn Styles' name. Like I'm not. <laughs> I guess that's I'm not, I, 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 <laughs> I don't want Styles to be supernatural. That's my hurdle of putting him on the list. Yeah, yeah. I think Styles I'll, is. A e- even if he if he was hypothetically, it would still just say Styles. <laughs> <laughs> Styles. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, who is the benefactor? Do you think we see that the numbers on the mm-hmm. Deadpool list? They're going to mm-hmm. add up to 170 million dollars mm-hmm. stolen from the Hale Vault, and they're using this money to finance the murders. So, mm-hmm. who do you think could possibly be the benefactor? And if you guys can tell us if we've met them before, is it someone we Ian know? Really wants to know? All I'll say is like this was like our. That was another reason I hated being on set or any other department from like. Episode <laughs> So five on was everybody's like, all they want to know is who's the benefactor, and like giving us our theory and seeing if like, if we would break, and yeah, be like, you got the, it. The actors and, like, were asking you guys this. Oh, everyone, actors, crew, crew. Wow. We'd be, like waiting in they, line at the catering truck, and they'd be like, so I think it's uh, you know, yeah, they and, their theory. Yeah, and they just look blank and like because <laughs> you don't want to say no, you don't want to say anything. Yeah. So it's like, and you just be like, oh, I don't know, um, <laughs> but. Uh, so do you we think do know. Do you, <laughs> do you think the benefactor is like one of those people that are like, oh yeah, who's the benefactor? Like, well, do you think the you know, benefactor M- himself? MTV tried uh, when we pitched them the mystery at the beginning of the year. Uh, Jeff and I do a call over the phone, and then they call us back about, and like, well, you know, and then we didn't tell them who the benefactor was. <laughs> wow. We kept it a secret. We wanted to keep it a secret because we don't we don't trust those people. No, I'm just kidding. They're great. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's well, top we, we didn't. We, it was top secret, and so we didn't tell them. And um, and then I remember we had like an integrated market call where they wanted to know like you know who might be driving our, our, the Prius this year or whatever and then they're like what about uh, the benefactor do you think he'll have a car <laughs> and I'm like what do you mean I'm like uh, you're trying to yeah all right and, um, oh, so, uh, they, so yeah. hilarious. Jeff tortured people with that though like even when the outline went out wide to cast crew mm-hmm. it was redacted yeah. <laughs> it was like the last scene was like confidential <gasps> oh <laughs> then wow the writer's draft did not reveal the, the, the episode yeah. where you find out we kept under lock for a while as yeah. long as we could Can, yeah. is it further down the season or I'm is not it going to be a when... while <laughs> nothing it's not next week I'll give you that one <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll go that, Thank I'll, you, I will Ian. go that, that was, far that's really generous <laughs> yeah. well you know one of the things uh, uh, beginning of this year was we wanted to get back to who is the alpha which is the season one mystery, mm-hmm. and and who was the Canima, and we sort of thought that those mysteries are a lot of fun for our mm-hmm. audience, and they, yeah. it, it builds it up. Mm-hmm. Whereas last year we, I think we showed Styles was the No Gets an A in like episode four or five, or yeah, something yeah, like that. yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and we still had a lot of mystery in that story, but it wasn't as as clean as the one question, who is the benefactor? Yeah, right. And so we're like, oh, that'll go in a T-shirt, I'm like. <laughs> that looks great. Yeah, no, I'm excited to find out. I'm glad you guys are making us wait. What are your mm-hmm. guesses? Uh, you know what? Like, I thought it was someone that we already knew. I thought it was going to be Chris Argent because mm-hmm. he's lost so much. So who in this town would possibly want all the supernatural creatures to die? Well, maybe someone who has lost everything and has mm-hmm. nothing left. And he's lost Allison. He lost Victoria. And, and even Kate, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. He lost his sister. Right. And then in the end of this episode, it seems like he's switching sides a bit. So, um, I... I thought he was going to be the benefactor just because it made sense to me if it was someone we knew that he was the only one who really had reason to. But now with this whole thing with Lydia's family opening up, it seems it could be someone in Lydia's family as well because, you know, they don't have any money. Maybe they're not selling the lake house because it's in Beacon Hills, you know, because it's in this place where no one wants to live, I'm not sure. (laughs) So there could be someone in her family that's the benefactor. And then if it's someone new, that we that we have just meant this season so far, I guess I'd have to say Mason just because I know the least about him. Mm. What do you think, June? Well, I mean, I think on Twitter, Lauren at Cherish Forest said that we were forgetting about Jer- 
Gerard, is that is that Gerard. It is, yeah. yeah. Gerard, yeah. I just feel like they've gone down that avenue so many times. I, I don't think you guys are gonna do it again. And I, if if we didn't have that whole evil spirit thing with Styles, I would say maybe like Lydia is just going crazy and she mm-hmm. has like split personality. And hey, maybe she's, she's trying like, to get the money for her family. Yeah. yeah, and then she's just like, she's kind of broken and like she's kind of flipped a switch and was like, you know, I don't even want any part of this anymore. Like, I just want everybody to go away. Like, you know. I don't she's know. Kind of lost a lot too, but I don't know. That's crazy. Those are all theories. <laughs> yeah, that would be crazy. That's why it's fun to that's, hear. Yeah, that's yeah. what's yeah. cool about the mystery. There's so yeah. many people that would want the supernaturals gone, and then with the money factor, like yeah, mm-hmm. it's not to no good today. Yeah, it's not. not. It's not. It's gone. Oh, he's in a, he's in a box. Not That's all I got. Not a, he's not a bandaged man. Yeah. So, so Kira gets to play on the lacrosse team, and she tells her father, thinking that he found out she's on the lacrosse team. She doesn't think it's that. She mm-hmm. thought it was the Deadpool stuff, mm-hmm. and she sort of throws that out there. But I want to know: Are they still moving? Did they give it up on that? I know. Can you guys say anything about that? Yeah. Are we gonna see it later? What happens with that storyline? We're not quite done with uh, with that yet. Okay. Um, I'll take that. But you know, we love <laughs> we love the Yukamoras. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a lot of stable family or uh, yeah. uh, nuclear families, I guess. You know, yeah. two yeah. parent yeah, families on this show. That's true. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, both um, Ken and uh, Tamlin. Uh, they really brought something, even though they're a very strange family. She's 900 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, th- we have a lot of fun with them. And we, we'll be seeing them. I think Tamlin pops up again in like yeah. eight or something. She's oh. so. Um, now that we're talking about the Yukimura family, what if, what if the benefactor is like that Japanese mafia? <laughs> Silver uh, finger. Factor. <laughs> the Yakuza. Yeah. I'm, I feel like that's done. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, don't know. <laughs> I, I will say I the, don't know. the Yakuza thing is is uh, from last season. We had we did the, the story with the Yakuza and they, they stole the finger in the armored car. Right. Yeah. We were both very uh, those storylines. We were kind of like, oh, it's like Alias on a basic cable budget. <laughs> like, the way you know our, our directors are so good at making these things seem more exciting than they are expensive mm. and. Um, <laughs> We, and you know, so we sort of brought that thriller thing back into this. With mm-hmm. now we're getting into the world of organized assassins and things like yeah, that. And I, I love think that. Sort of, we, we were testing the waters last year with those stories, and um, we liked the way they came out. And we sort of realized, like, okay, well, we can do these a lot of these stories in our abandoned warehouse district of Beacon Hills, which is <laughs> behind our sound stages. Um, I really like that we're getting that human killer this season. Mm-hmm. I I think that they're not going to be supernatural. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be someone who's just like sick of all of this, you know. They obviously have to have a reason. Mm-hmm. And if they're not if they were supernatural, I feel like they'd be more understanding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, another another interesting theory that's going on is um Scott's dad. Agent oh, McCall. I forgot all about yeah, Agent because McCall. Because he's just like he just kind of showed up out of nowhere, and mm-hmm. he, you know, we haven't really seen him. I agree and, with that. He's definitely mm-hmm. those shoes that walked out without 117 mm-hmm. million. Definitely could have been his shoes. Mm-hmm. I yep. agree it's with that. That's a good theory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we love haven't... Matt Del Negro. He plays um, uh, uh, Scott's dad, mm-hmm. and uh, he's super tall. That guy. Yeah, really? yeah, he seems very tall. Yeah. When he came he's back, tall I... enough to be the benefactor. <laughs> When he came back, I was like, wait, I don't feel like he just wanted to come back to, like, fix things with, you know, uh, Scott. I know. Because we didn't really see them fix yeah, things. So don't. it's like, mm-hmm. why is he back? So that's a great theory. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the episode, and then we'll get into a little interview with you guys and find out some personal information of why you're in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they find out, Styles figures it out, that it was somebody at the party because the keg was ordered there. And then he mm-hmm. finds out, you know, it was someone on the lacrosse team because mm-hmm. the marks on the body was from the lacrosse stick. Mm-hmm. So it all had, we were going to the lacrosse game mm-hmm. and Styles is like, I think we should call it off. I'm not even on the list and I'm terrified. I love Styles so much. <laughs> that was such a good Styles lines. moment. Is there someone who is like, I'm writing all the Styles lines? Is there, so, <laughs> is there like a comedian? Or do you guys all sort of share those lines? I, uh, <laughs> for some scenes, especially a lot of the Styles stuff, like we, we tend to act it out a little bit in the room. <laughs> and then, That's like, fun. when Jeff and I will do final passes on stuff late at night, like, uh, sometimes we'll just start doing the characters, just acting out, like, either he'll be Scott or I'll be Styles. Like, what would we say in this? Because we're both, we know how to be dumb teenage boys. <laughs> so, uh, and, like, uh, and then he, uh, 
so that's sort of all the voices. All everything goes through Jeff in the end. Mm-hmm. Um, but on that process, I got to say the sca- the weirdest thing is when Jeff does Peter. <laughs> oh, why, why is it weird? Oh Can you imagine oh, that? It's just like Jeff will do. We'll just have. I remember he had a friend over watching us trying to finish up a Peter scene, and oh, it's yeah. Jeff just Jeff just doing. He rises and he crescendos, and Jeff <laughs> loves Peter. <laughs> we do too. I'm yeah. gonna ask him to do it when he comes in. I'm gonna ask him. Oh, just bring Peter. in a page of the. That? <laughs> that would be amazing. It, he'll do it. He'll do the. There's a whole. Now, what's that Peter model? I'm a creature of habit. Yeah. Like, Wait, he's, he's going to yeah, be at yeah. Comic-Con, right? I may get to see this earlier. <laughs> I don't know. It, Probably. Be, yeah, I'm yeah. going to step will. up to that microphone. Yeah, definitely yeah. will. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so, you know, we get this whole story. Liam is the beta now, and Derek's mm-hmm. kind of helping Scott, you know, saying he's going to be stronger with that anger issue. And, you know, we find out that the IED is the intermittent explosive disorder that he <laughs> had, and that's that's why, you know, he yeah. got kicked out, and after all the red cards, he mm-hmm. messed up his coach's car. Mm-hmm. And um, so it seems like he's going to be hard for Scott to control, but I was glad that they were not going after him this episode, and it turned out to be Brett, the guy who was really torturing him. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just didn't know there were all these other, like, werewolves in town. I know. And also, like, I was thinking, like, is it a private school, like, nearby? Is it, like, in Beacon County? Mm-hmm. It would be in Beacon <laughs> County. It would yeah. be yeah. in Beacon County. We also, well, it's probably also evil. I don't know. It's pro- <laughs> there's probably an evil prep school. And there's also reasons for that. Like, stay right. tuned about yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. I just, I loved, I want to mention, like, I love Derek's and Scott's interaction in that scene in the, in mm-hmm. the locker room. I thought that was so amazing. And it's so awesome to see Scott finally stepping up to that leader role. Yeah. And I, we got the badass scene with Violet when he mm-hmm. finally put that girl in, in her like, place. Uh uh-uh. uh. Seriously? Because, really? Yeah, because so we have yeah. not really seen that this season. Right. So I really was excited about that scene because, mm-hmm. you know, oftentimes he's, like, still getting beaten down when mm-hmm. he's the alpha. And so I was mm-hmm. really happy to see that, you know, that thermal cut wire got yeah. nothing on him. So. Totally. He does a lot by choice, I think, Scott. Because he, Because of his strength, he holds back a lot. Maybe sometimes oh, when he shouldn't. Right. But in that case, he was just his life was to the rat. <laughs> yeah. And, like, and, and that's a great fear of his, too, is to become the horrible monster, you know, that right. Peter was right. in season one. So, so. I don't yeah. think he killed Violet, so probably next, he doesn't kill anyone. No, so next yeah. episode we're going to see probably Garrett trying to find out where they're holding Violet totally. and they're going to be questioning her, so that's going to be interesting to see mm-hmm. if we can get any answers out of her, because we we know she doesn't know who the benefactor yeah, is. Yeah, I don't think, yeah. But maybe we can learn more about the, the orphans and, and like the you process. know, where they live, because like, they're <laughs> lying about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Where do, yeah. Are they just, like, in college Constant training, like the Hunger Games. I know. Who's like, like, was like, was training them? That's what you know, I know. Well, one of the yeah. things when we started the season with like, are we? We had the death pool idea, and uh, and then it was like, oh, we're gonna need all these weird assassins, mm-hmm. and it was like the mute, the orphans, and then we probably came up with like twenty. Yeah. And I think we, you'll end up seeing like maybe four. Or <laughs> oh, so we have four, two five, more. I don't know. Ooh. But I mean, we, we just ran out of space, and uh, part of, another thing with the idea behind this, uh, we all got behind this was. We wanted to get better, bigger guest stars, mm-hmm. um, and so like last year we had Doug Jones as a, a Barrow, that serial killer, mm-hmm. in one episode. And now that we're in LA, we have access to a lot, a, a larger talent pool than we did in Atlanta. And so we thought, oh, this would be a great way to get a whole bunch of really cool guest stars. Like you know, we had Mason and Samantha, um, and That's uh, awesome. uh, oh, and uh, um, Joe Scat, who played the mute. Oh, um, yeah, and he was yeah. in Game of Thrones, right? Yeah, and yeah. he was on uh, Banshee, which is one of my favorite shows. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. As a giant albino uh, crime lord. Or <laughs> <laughs> How did you guys narrow it down to, you know, which were the best? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Trying to think. Th- I remember, like, the process of creating the mute was like, well, what's the first one? So yeah. it better be scary. <laughs> and it was like, we're going around the room, and, like, I don't know who said, like, Tomahawk. And then, like, you know, the, the whole thing where he's uh, chasing him through the house and, like, you know, telling him to to open up the, to yeah. break the mirror. And yeah. I remember, that was so I, scary. <laughs> my thought was, the scariest movie I saw last year was Her, that what kind of fucking Phoenix <laughs> movie. What? And I so, love that movie. <laughs> I just thought it was so weird. And and, uh, <laughs> and I just thought, I wanted to do a, an assassin who was like a, a surrogate, like in that scene oh, with right. the electronic yeah. voice. Yeah. Um, my favorite thing that he did, the mute, was when he like plugged in the ivy and kind of like transcoded all that data into his brain. I'm like, you guys have really figured out a great way to well, study. That was, oh, well, Jeff, for the, the thing is, and then I, I said, maybe he speaks like, yeah. you know, he types the thing in his mouth and in his hand and, and it speaks out because maybe we thought his face. 
face might be mutilated. And Jeff said, like, no, he has no mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all like, all right, sure. Yeah. Uh, but that's food. Because that was, yeah, that's that was, how yeah. when he, when he, when he say, said that, that right food. away, yeah. my first question, I think Stalinsky said it in the next episode, was like, well, how does he eat? Yeah. Like, and, and so we've had the tube scene where he's getting yeah. being fed like yeah. from a food true. processor. See, and I also thought, trying to crack the code at the same time. Because yeah. I saw that's the why. data, so I'm like, oh, there's data going into his brain. I thought that's cool. So I'm I'm sticking to the way I saw it. I I, want to say we had more of that where he put like some some food in there and like mashed it up. He had like a magic bullet sitting. That scene was going on forever. There was so much happening. (laughs) But we ultimately decided it was so gross. And it turned out to be a big... Thing for our practical effects guys to figure out how to do it. Oh, can you tell us about maybe one of the creatures who we don't see this season? Who mm. you guys thought about in the writers' room? God, I don't. I'd have to look at the. I don't even remember. The only one I remember is pretty good, and I feel like we might use it. Okay, later, so. all right. W- yeah. No spoilers here. Yeah. We don't want them either. Yeah, we need lots of ideas because they just they just keep ordering episodes. So yeah. we, 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 <laughs> any, any, we're never doing anything. Yeah. We don't throw anything out. Yeah. Jeff is That's never good. going on a break, is right. He's on vacation <laughs> he's right on now, day. actually. Oh, yeah. He's on his way back. Wow. He's in Puerto Vallarta and with yeah. a lot of the guys from our crew. Uh, yeah. uh, Russell's down there. That's so they're probably child. doing location scouting. I know. I was going to say, is it a vacation or is it a work I, all, vacation? All I know is I've seen their on, on Instagram and Facebook. They're not Wherever they're doing, they're not wearing shirts for the entire yeah, time. Yeah, I know. I'd be, so, like, I'd be very intimidated. It's yeah. theoretically a vacation, but I've seen some work coming out of there, too. Yeah. So. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, he was like, yeah. tweeting, live tweeting last yeah. night. And he took over the MTV team. Well, he's yeah. back. He'll yeah. be at Comic-Con on uh, uh, Thursday. Yeah. I guess. Awesome. Yeah. 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 I will be there. I will find I'm him. I will ask for this Peter. I know. Uh, I need to see that. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait. Um, so we get to see, yeah, that Oriah comes back. We got mm-hmm. to see a little bit of Derek and Argent, and then Oriah comes back, and it seems like Chris is going to switch sides. A lot of people were saying they thought he was going to say what Allison made the code. Uh, we protect those who cannot protect themselves. A lot mm-hmm. of people wanted that, and they were sad whenever he actually mm-hmm. said what the old code wa- was. Did you guys debate at all about saying whether he would say, you know, Allison's new code? Uh, well, you know, Argent has a has an arc this year, mm-hmm. and uh, you'll see sort of where that's going, I guess. Okay, I yeah, still. I, I mean, th- the, the, I don't think there were many arguments about his whole arc. You know, there's like some a couple, you know, talks about little tweaks, little pieces of it here and there, but like. Yeah, we were pretty universal. Uh, you know, and, uh, uh, I think Yvonne um, Cole, who plays uh, Araya, she's just another one of those actresses that we just, we, you know, it's always going to be in one episode, <laughs> and then we just love. She's great. And she's great. She's, she's the most enthusiastic person on set because she's, I know she's in a bunch of shows. I, I think she'll switch to birth, and I think she's going to be on Jane the Virgin coming up, as, and she's, she plays the sweet grandma. And she's always <laughs> saying that. Like, she's like, on this show, I get to be so evil. <laughs> Like, she loves it. Was she, like, on Heroes? I think I saw her on Heroes. I, oh, she sure. she is, like, the long... I mean, yeah. yeah. I th- I think she was even in West Side Story, I want to... <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I, she's I all over like, the place. Uh, it's amazing. The, the actor who plays Severo was was mm. saying, he's like, she's a legend. Like, she, I think, was with Pacino and De Niro back in... I, oh, wow. Like, she's I she's totally really wrong, good. So. She's fun. Cool. Say that so I want to get into, fun. like, a little interview with you guys. <laughs> now, we, I know we've had Laura and Ian on before, but I, I always ask, um, Angela, I ask them, what specifically from your childhood <laughs> would you say led you to, like, this career in an industry to be, like, a writer? Were you writing when you were younger? When did that start? I was writing when I was young. <laughs> I was writing as soon as I could hold a pencil. And oh. I wrote this little book. The Planet of the O's. So I'm like, because I had like Cheerios one morning or something. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Did I, you like sell it to your parents? I know when we had Corey Trench on, he was like, I would make comments and the, or comics, and then I would he would sell them to his parents. <laughs> oh my god, so cute. So did you go that far no, with your no, uh, writing? No, <laughs> yeah, I probably need to work on my money games. Still. <laughs> <laughs> Monetize this. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, I've, I've always loved it, and I've always loved genre too. Obviously, I started with sci-fi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can you remind us, Laura, why you you know what drew you into doing music? Um, well, I knew I wanted to do something film related, and mm-hmm. I didn't know that it, this was even a job when I first started. But I came to school in LA, kind of to help to immerse myself and just learn everything I could. Mm-hmm. And then I always liked music too. Like I liked both. And mm-hmm. I'm a Gemini, so I think maybe. Me too. Yeah, like I don't know. I have I have like 
many different uh, I have interests. no excuse. Yeah. I'm yeah. just ADD. I like everything. Yeah, I mean, maybe that too. I, <laughs> probably. But And I always really liked, I was always going to concerts. I never even thought of it as a career. Wow. And then the longer I kind of my first job out of college, I worked at a talent agency, and everyone says that's a good, like, master's program mm-hmm. in a way because you just meet everybody mm-hmm. and see what different jobs are. And then as soon as I found that it was a job, I was mm-hmm. like, I need to get into this stat, you know? So I just did all the research I could, and there really wasn't much out there because I've, I've been doing it, like, 10 years now. Um, so there's definitely more um, attention to the profession than yeah. when I first started. But mm-hmm. yeah, how? Um, do, what's the interview like? You do you bring in like your playlist for like whoever's interviewing you? I mean, well, I did have to. Um, I did go in, so I looked, and someone was looking for an assistant, mm-hmm. and but they didn't say who it was. Mm-hmm. So it was just sort of very. It was the UTA job list. Yeah, yes. remember that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I still get those. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm like maybe I'm dead. But uh, so I went in, and when I got there every soundtrack that I owned was, um, there were two uh, music supervisors that I went to go work for, and it was every soundtrack I'd owned, and so I just totally Whoa. nerded out, and I think they were like, whoa. Because <laughs> I was like, um, one, of the, one of the movies they did was, um, well, she did Moulin Rouge, but uh, Romeo oh and Juliet. God. I love. And um, I love the, um, oh no, sorry, it was Great Expectations. There's this pulp mm. song, and I like nerded out about this per- this pulp song, and she's like, how did you even pay attention to that? You know, but, <laughs> so I think that showed, and then I did have to do a mixtape. That's really cool. I did, so at, cool. but that was like round two or three, and then, mm-hmm. um, and I actually didn't get the job at first, but then I think, because I was like such a nerd out, like I just was like, <gasps> that they found a job for me. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. They that's were even like, better. You know, can you hold tight for a little bit? And um, so it was good. And then like it was, it, and pretty much since the day I started, I was like, I can't believe this is a job, you know. So <laughs> there's just there's a lot of fun things that go with it, and mm-hmm. that's it's really awesome. fun. So that's but, a great story. Yeah. No, no. Ian, can you walk us through a little bit of you know your childhood? Were you producing things left and right, or where did that come in? <laughs> were, you, were you more a I writer? I can totally imagine Ian like <laughs> like making directing these super people. business class like business calls, <laughs> and cold calls, and just being like super like. No, I I tried that world when I got out to town. Uh, I think it was. I was an assistant at the Sci-Fi Channel, and like I'm just a terrible like assistant and executive. Like I, I do not want to wear like shirt and tuck in my into my pants and and wear nice shoes. Like no, I'm not doing that. Um, but you know, I've always wanted to. Uh, uh, I always wanted to write television. Um, I think I grew up watching The X Files. Was one of the first mm-hmm. uh, came on when I was probably in like sixth grade, and I just remember like thinking like seeing that writing credit like written by Chris Carter, and I'm like, oh. I, I want to do that, <laughs> and so uh, and that was just sort of my career trajectory. I uh, went to school uh, NYU uh, in the writing program, and then I, I oh. they they kind of encourage you to stay there and write plays and stuff. And me and my mm-hmm. buddies are like, we're going to Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> and so they, we all moved out here together about uh, almost ten years ago, probably over ten years ago now. And uh, you know, some of them write on The Closer and uh, Always Sunny, and I started on Warehouse Thirteen. Wow. Uh, the Sci-Fi Channel, and I was like, I guess I was like 25 when it started, or 26, and I didn't. It was like you just get on the job training experience. Like That's I had amazing. no idea how you write a TV show, but just mm-hmm. sitting there, we had a whole bunch of insanely experienced people on that show, and uh, I'm like, oh, this is great. So I stuck with that show for about five years, uh, five seasons. Then we got uh, axed. And I had a job offer at Teen Wolf because I knew Christians, so I took that. Wow. So were you, you were assistant, you said, when you first came out here, and then how did that transition uh, into first, being a writer? My first gig was I was assistant uh, PA for Robert Zemeckis, and that was my first gig wow. when I first got out here, which uh, is just like, when you're, it's like this PA, and every, he always has a boy working against these two <laughs> fantastic ladies who are his assistants to cover everything, and then they have a guy who drives everywhere. <laughs> Pretends to be him on the phone with credit card companies, <laughs> <laughs> and whoever else needs to pretend to be on the phone and uh, and just do all the heavy lifting. And it's like you know, there's a I, I know like there's a plaque on the wall in Image Movers, which is Zemeckis' company of people who've had this job. And I guess I'm on there now. But before that, there was like mm-hmm. I know the writer Vihard Huckabee's was on there, wow. and there were a couple other people who came up in the industry. And it was like your first gig as soon as you get to college, you always hire somebody to do this job for him. Um, so it was really cool. Uh, I did that for a year. Then I was uh, an assistant at the Sci Fi Channel for a year, and that sort of led to me getting to know the people at Warehouse 13, which was a pilot they were picking up, and getting on that. That's awesome. Mm. 
So That's can cool. you guys maybe run through like your favorite on set experience or writer's room experience? I know you guys don't go to set much, but you guys have the funniest stories of when you actually like do run into the actors. Cause I know they're always they're always like begging to know who's the benefactor, who's the Duroc. So so I got this dog that I found in the on the street one night. And like Aww. I want to say like middle of airing probably season three. So we must have been shooting shooting three B. Three, three B. Right. So last summer, uh, which felt like four years ago now. And I I, I I just found this puppy and then I was like he's like wounded and I took him to the vet and I'm like all right well he's no chip I'm like fine I'll take it I'll take the dog. And I'm just like, so I, I don't want to do with this dog all day, so I'm just bringing it to work. And it's just <laughs> sitting in my office. And oh. Holland Roden loves dogs. Mm. And she found the dog, picked it up, grabbed the dog, was terrified, and peed all over her wardrobe. Oh. <laughs> oh <my laughs> so God. thankfully, we, oh my had, we had a backup. But Holland's, a, <laughs> Holland's a, she loves dogs. She's like, oh, it's a little baby dog. Yeah. <laughs> and so she didn't make a, f a fuss about it. But I was like, oh god, this is not good because I've only been here like a month. <laughs> and this strange dog I just found. So random. Um, that's so funny. So that's my set story. I like that one. My that dog so peed funny. on Holland. <laughs> can, can you can you guys stop that? Did your dog pee on anybody? I don't know about that. It's not that <laughs> funny, but like, it was like a poignant moment for me. I was um, cause I used to be on set all the time, seasons mm -hmm. one and two, and then. Mm -hmm. um, Season three in that really popular episode, Motel California. Mm, yes, yeah. we all love it. <laughs> I just, I, I went to set that day that they were shooting the, um, when Scott doused himself with gasoline, mm -hmm. and it's the You're My Brother speech that Aww. Dylan was, <laughs> I Aww. cried. Aww. I was like, I was. these yeah. little babies, that two little babies are all grown up. They were amazing. <laughs> they were both so good, and it just gave me chills that night. Uh, mm. I, I loved that episode, and I loved when they got on the bus, that song. Oh, God, I, was, I, love, I know. I'm, I'm still <laughs> obsessed with that song. Do what song is that song? It's Can Gabriel you Bruce. Yeah. And the name is... I know, I can't remember, but... I, I should know. You sent me quite a few Gabriel Bruce songs. Ugh, They're just amazing. Him. He's so good. I, I want him to... I don't, yeah, I don't know. I hope I he think, works on something new. I think that's, that's my song, second uh, favorite song that you've done. That, that one? one? And Bad Moon Rising was my favorite. Oh, Bad Moon... Oh, yeah. from my, the my, finale? Uh, my yeah. favorite was uh, the, the song that plays at the epilogue montage of 3B. At Which the like, end? Yeah. Oh, that's... I, I totally don't know who it is. It's I this Australian band called Whitaker. And yeah. the song's my own. Oh, I still, like... That song comes on, and I'm still like, oh, like it's, I'm that, that says something down. because we needed that song, and we, you know, we we shoot the whole thing. We don't find the song until post. I don't know right. if you already had a plan no, for no. it. No, no, like, and and that song, I just like, I found it. Um, I just like, I heard it, and I was like, this is amazing. And then I played it for Gabe, who edited the finale. Mm -hmm. And he's like, we'll, we'll just we'll figure something out. We'll just figure, you know, because it was just like one of those we loved it so much. Mm -hmm. So he just kind of built around, and that's also fun that like sometimes some are scripted but he's like no we'll just make this moment and you know it'll play for five minutes and it's great yeah so and I still love listening to that song some you're like oh, I'm kind of get over it but that one I will like put on all the time yeah. <laughs> and I had another friend who's like a supervisor was like I'm jealous of you for getting that one before any you know like because we used it so iconically too or mm -hmm. in our you know but um so I don't think that people could use it. Again. I mean, people can use it again, but right. it's but we did very it. tied. We, so. well, we did it first. Oh, right. Yeah, and yeah a small. They're like from Australia, and I don't, yeah. So. Well, we're getting the cue to leave, but can you guys tell us? Is there any other projects you're working on on the side personally, or can the fans follow you and tweet at you? Do you have a Twitter? I have a Twitter at Nations Film. Okay, yeah, and then are you work, are you do are you writing anything on the side or? There's a couple things. A couple really things. About, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. <laughs> we just we want to promote you know our you guys are coming on here and all your side projects that you're working on too. What about you, Laura? Um, yeah, so you can follow me. At, it's at La La Web, and um, do you I, tweet out awesome music all the time? Um, <laughs> yes, some, yeah, sometimes she I does. try, but sometimes it all just goes into the show. Or right now, in the mode of all of a sudden, you know, what we used or yeah. that kind of thing. And um, I, I'm working on a couple documentaries right now. Oh, that's and, awesome. Um, I had a film. I, I worked. I got to work on a Joss Whedon film that came out in April called In Your Eyes. Oh, oh so oh, you can, oh, uh, you yeah. Can, um, he send it to like you can just buy it directly from Vimeo for five dollars and the soundtrack we just are working on so the physical uh, soundtracks you can go buy it now so awesome Hi. that's so cool so I'm gonna do, do that. that what about do you have a Twitter Ian yeah uh, Ian Stokes 82 
at Twitter. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are, are you working on any side projects <laughs> on your <laughs> on hiatus or anything uh, you want to talk about? I'm working on my tan, and I just bought this video game, Watch Dogs. I'm like an hour into that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds that's, that's amazing. Do you have the headset? Can people join you? Oh, I'm going to try to train my dog this summer. <laughs> so he doesn't nice. be on action. Yes. <laughs> Where can we find you, June? You guys can find me at, at Miss June Lee on Twitter. And I'm at Cinematic Escape. You can check out my blog at Cinematic Escape. Thanks, guys. Tune in next week. Thanks, Bye. guys. Executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff. We would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.